Monty Hall problem. Suppose you're on a game show, and you're given the choice of three doors, behind one door is a car, behind the others, goats. You pick a door, say number one, and the host, who knows what's behind the doors, opens another door, say number three, which has a goat. He then says to you, do you want to pick door number two? Is it to your advantage to switch your choice? Now, Merrill has a column every week in Parade. And people write in questions, usually about their love life and uh, weird things. And she answers them. And she's well qualified to do this because she's listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as having the highest IQ of a human being ever at 228. And so, you know, she's in some sense qualified to answer any question that is written in. Now, in September of 1990, and we're passing out the articles now, and it shows the first, the first article. This guy named Craig Whitaker writes in and asks Marilyn if you should switch in this game. So you can all read that. It says, suppose you're on a game show and you're given the choice of three doors. Behind one door is a car, behind the others, goats. You pick a door, say number one, and the host, who knows what's behind the doors, opens another one, say door three, which has a goat. He says to you, do you want to pick door number two? Is it to your advantage to switch? Now, Marilyn writes back, saying very plainly, yes, you should switch. The first door had a one in three chance of winning, the second door has a two in three chance. Here's a good way to visualize what's going on. Suppose there are a million doors. You pick door number one, then the host, who knows what's behind the doors, reveals every other door but one and seven, 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 seven. Well, it would sort of look like seven, 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 seven is the one with the car, and you'd switch pretty fast. All right, that's her argument. That is not exactly a proof, okay, that the answer is you should switch or that the probability is two-thirds, all right? Now, because she's giving another problem with a million doors, but you've got a problem with three doors. And as we'll see in recitation tomorrow, the number of doors actually matters in terms of some strategies here. Um, so people weren't convinced by this. And so if you look to the next page, you see people writing in. And there's a lot of write-ins. The first one's by Robert Sachs, who is actually, I, I looked him up on Google, and he's on the faculty at George Mason University. Uh, I also noticed that in his history, he got his BA from Harvard. So that should tell you something about the quality of his response here. He says, since you seem to enjoy coming straight to the point, I'll do the same. You blew it. Let me explain. If one door is shown to be a loser, that information, information changes the probability of either remaining choice, neither of which has any reason to be more likely, than, and so the answer is one half of having the car. Then he says, as a professional mathematician, I'm very concerned with the general public's lack of mathematical skills. Please help by confessing your error, and in the future, be more careful. Just a little gratuitous extra statement there. Uh, next, we've got a PhD from Florida, Scott Smith, who says, you blew it, and you blew it big. Since you seem to have difficulty grasping the basic principles at work here, I'll explain. After the host reveals a goat, you now have a one in two chance of being correct. Whether you change your selection or not, the doors, the odds are the same. There is enough mathematical illiteracy in this country, and we don't need the world's highest IQ propagating more. Shame. Well, now, this guy is right about that one point about mathematical illiteracy in the country. Uh, the next guy, Barry Pasternak, you know, he lists himself as California Faculty Association. He actually was president of the California Faculty Association. He says, your answer to the question is an error. But if it is any consolation, many of my academic colleagues have also been stumped by this problem. OK, so next page, Marilyn writes back. You know, and she says, you know, Good heavens, with so much learned opposition, I'll bet this is going to keep math classes all over the country busy on Monday. And it did. It was a huge uproar at the time about this. So now she tries to explain it some more with shells and stuff under the shells and so forth, trying to argue it. 
Um, and then she says, just try the experiment six times or something, and you'll see. You know, but it's not really convincing. It's not a proof. She's sort of waving hands at it to give you some idea why she thinks she's right. But when I look at the hand waving here versus the hand waving on those faculty, well, they're, it's all hand waving. All right, so you go to the next page. And now the letters are getting a little nastier. Uh, we got another University of Florida guy. He says, may I suggest you obtain and refer to a standard textbook on probability before you try to answer a question of this type again? Then Robert Smith, Georgia State, I am sure you will receive many letters on this topic from high school and college students. Perhaps you should keep a few addresses for help with future columns. <laughs> These are great. Uh, now this next guy, Ray Bobo. Now, he's a real guy. I looked him up too. He, it's not fake. That's his real name. And I, I got to say, if, if my name was Bobo, I'd think twice before writing into Parade <laughs> magazine, <laughs> you know, especially if I'm wrong. <laughs> you know? Anyway, here's Bobo. You are utterly incorrect about the game show question, and I hope this controversy will call some public attention to the serious national crisis in mathematical education. Well, that's fair. Uh, if you can admit your error, you will have contributed constructively towards the solution of a deplorable situation. Now, here's great. How many irate, irate mathematicians are needed to get you to change your mind? Well, that's proof by intimidation, right? <laughs> you know, it's not here's the reason why. He just so many irate mathematicians said it, they must, must be right. Ah, uh, the next guy. I am in shock that after being corrected by at least three mathematicians, you still do not see your mistake. As if three mathematicians, that's sort of the criteria for correctness. Uh, oh, this guy's bad. Uh, maybe women look at math problems differently than men. Ooh. Well, maybe it's a good thing in this case. I don't know. Uh, oh, and then we have Glenn Calkins, you are the goat. Uh, Finally, this guy, uh, U.S. Army Research Institute, a little scary. You made a mistake, but look at the positive side. If all those PhDs were wrong, the country would be in some very serious trouble. <laughs> mm. All right, now Marilyn writes an even longer response because uh, she's getting zillions of letters, 90% voting against her that she's wrong. Uh, she again now suggests a nationwide experiment so that nationwide you do the sample a million times and get the answer, which really wouldn't prove it either. And then we go to the last page, there's one last letter, and this is what finished the uh, controversy in the press. Uh, comes from MIT. You are indeed correct. My colleagues at work had a ball with this problem, and I dare say that most of them, including me at first, thought you were wrong. Uh, so maybe that 50000 a year somebody is paying for education is worth something because MIT came in and agreed with her. Okay, it turns out that Marilyn was correct in her statement that you should switch and that if you switch you have a two-thirds chance of winning. So if you don't switch, you got a one-third chance of winning. Uh, provided that Monty is guaranteed to open a door with a goat, you know, and that's, that's the assumption here. And the proof is simple, although Marilyn's reasoning wasn't so convincing, I didn't think. And all those PhDs that wrote in with those stupid letters, they're, they're probably intelligent people. After all, they got advanced degrees in mathematics, and most of them were faculty teaching mathematics. A little scary, uh, but they just weren't following the basic principles. They were following their intuition. They didn't go through the basic steps to figure out the probability. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through the basic steps now and see how to solve it. And we will use these steps to solve pretty much every problem in probability.